Welcome. My name is Ken E.K. and they call me the Slam Master. I'm going to be speaking to the theme, Lost, Find, and Redirect. But I'm going to begin with a story. I am a poet, so I will begin with a poem. And hopefully you will find in this poem the central theme of my message. And after that, I would speak a little bit more about that message. This message is about what in Igbo we call Ofonogu. And it began last night when a kindred spirit stopped by on his way to the ancestral lands of the beyond. Gaunt and depleted in flesh, he, however, looked refreshed, rekindled, young in spirit. He glowed like fireflies in the tropical dark. He stared at me kindly, benevolently, his eyes filled with the compassion of the adult. Tell him, my friend, he addressed me. I am embarking on the journey of all mortals. I go to join our illustrious ancestors in the pantheon of the blessed. Let me go with you now, my father, I replied. In life, you were the front from which I drank the wisdom of the ages. At your feet, I learned the beatitudes of life. From your life, I molded the sculpture of my own existence. Let me go with you. So, we walked the walk of spirits through grasslands and highlands, lowlands and farmlands, springs and springs and streams. With mere wishes, we scaled impassable mountains, fought through rivers. He, with his impara, his walking stick, and clad in his favorite blue jumper, with his red wrapper, slung over his bony chest like a rope, and I, in my jeans and loafers, bouncy with the buoyancy of youth. Yet, as we walked and walked through miles and miles of up country, Nna only got stronger and I weaker. At the ethereal boundary, of the departed and the earthly, he halted me. He came my strength, he said. You must go no further. Though Wanza and the birds are friends, they each fly to different winds. Allah and the Miri, earth and water masquerades dance together but they each dance to a different rhyme. The monkey's love for the banana must not lead it onto unfamiliar forests. You must go no further. Let me go with you, Nna, I pleaded. In life, I carried your stool to many a village meeting. I heard your pan one God as your age mates gathered at your obi. I carried the bushfowl and the antelope from your hunting exploits. 
Let me support you further, my father. Beloved one, he said, in life, you were the young stalk upon which our tender, creeping hopes hung. At birth, we recognize the eyes of the Dibia, the sage. Now, the young stalk has firmed. In adulthood, you have become the Eimba, the elephant, on whose strong back many ride on. But you must go no further. Reaching into his goatskin bag, he brought out the offer, consecrated stick of our forebears, symbol of equity, conscience, and authority. Beloved one, he said, on earth you were my child and yet my friend. The bond of love that unites us cannot be broken even by this last journey of mine. Here is the offer of our forebears. Jido for Jidogu. Hold truth and equity constant. They shall be the luminous stars with which you set the beacons of your life. When troubles and tribulations assail you, when men cry to you like weaklings and women no longer have faith in themselves, when the earth hides this pale, when the moon hides this pale face from the earth, fear not. Look to the power of Chineke, creator God within you. Look beyond the rising sun to the power that illumines it. Clutch your fall in confidence and walk the walk of the Spirit. And the path shall be lighted for you. Now I must depart with the rising sun. May all the benevolent deities of our land prosper you. So I returned, alone and desolate, walking the walk of the disconsolate. The tears of my grief mingling with the scrub of my earthly path. Today, however, I rise at dawn and I look beyond the rising sun to the power that illumines it, to Chiokike, God of creation. And I intone the ancient mantra of my forebears, Ejimofo, Ejimogu. I stand on truth and equity. I walk the walk of the Spirit. Thank you. So as we look for ways to redirect ourselves, I speak especially to young people here. I see a lot of despair, a lot of anger, a lot of uncertainty. I want to tell you that it is nothing new. That at the time some of us graduated too, we spent five years without a job. In fact, this radio Nigeria was in was one of the first places I also submitted an application. I didn't get to join it till 15 years or more later, thankfully at a higher level. But I want to say that we cannot save ourselves as a nation. We cannot redirect ourselves until we redirect ourselves as individuals. So are you lost? 
Do you need direction? What is your dream? My recommendation is don't look far. A successful redirection begins first with finding inner peace. And finding inner peace will begin by taking individual and personal responsibility for yourself. I did that with myself, and I decided that I wasn't going to wait for any job. And I started my first business at, when I was 21. I graduated at 20. And I'd never looked back. Joining public service was only a, re a recent thing. And when we created, when we started Abuja Literary Society, it was that sense of ownership. We came to a city in the 90s, and there was nowhere to entertain yourself other than the uh, bush bars, what we call the gardens these days. And if you were not interested in that kind of life or that kind of activity, you were just on your own. And so with my friend Victor Anolefo, Dr. Ike Anya, and all that, we sat down and started reading together. It was from there we decided to open it up to others. And today, Abuja Literary Society is 20 years old and has helped to nurture so many people who have gone on to become award winners in their different genres. The same thing we did in Lagos in the founding of the Eco Literary Society, or in coming to Enugu in the founding of the Enugu Literary Society, which is three years old now. And in many other things I have done, I have begun from a sense of individual responsibility, that if I don't do it, no one else will do what? Do it. And so for a young person trying to figure out what to do, I know it is more difficult now, especially it is more confusing now that we now have influencers who we are addicted to through our mobile phones. Where the differences between what is right and wrong is now a matter of popular opinion on Facebook or Snapchat and Twitter. And so if more people say that this is right on Twitter, a young person is often inclined to assume that it is right. True or false? Where we now measure influence by the number of followers we have. Some of my friends are in this hall, and often they say I should follow them on Twitter, and the first thing I ask is, where are you headed to? <laughs> Before I, before I can follow you, I need to know where you're going to so that we will not do like Andy in Living in Bondage. Say, ah, Polo Agwarokwa Mifa of Uma. Eh? So, I, I, whenever I'm in such a dilemma as to what should I do, where should I go, I retire to my village self, and I will explain. I grew up in the city, but my dad made the mistake of always taking us home to Eziela every long vacation and sometimes Christmas. It was there that I learned the ceremony of Igbo language, a language we hardly spoke at home. It was there that I, 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 I found out that all these so many cultural practices I've been told was evil that they had inbred what? Values in them. And what we needed to do was to pick these values, polish them, refine them, and modernize them. Instead, we threw them away, hook, line, and sinker. It was there I learned that it wasn't the white man that brought us wisdom. Because I met my grandpa and learned a whole lot from him. And for those of you familiar with my poetry, you will see a whole lot of what I learned from him in there. 
Now, it was there I learned that we may have retrogressed, but it's not too late. That we can go back, we can find that from our own cultures, every culture has it. And that we do not need to look far. And this concept of Ophonogu, for instance, I learned it there, that this was the greatest unwritten constitution in Igbo land. It was why a man of authority could hold the Ophor. The Ophor was just a physical stick. The Ophor was just a physical stick carved from the Ophor wood. But the Ophor Nogu was the moral code that governed the society, which was expressed in the proverb, Ewe bere ugo, do what? Ugo bere, nkesi beye belagini meya, unkukwaya. Let the hawk perch and let the eagle perch on the Iroko tree. Whichever would deny the other space, let its wings what? Break. A moral code that understood that do unto others as you would like to be done unto yourself. A moral code that guided the leader in ensuring that he was not unjust in terms of justice. And that the concept of equity was entrenched in the society. Equity is different from what? Justice and equality. Equity is a path to justice. And therefore, when I try to explain it to young ones, I say, I have a four, five-year-old daughter, and if we want to see across the window, and the window is this high, what does equality say? I should put a, what, cabinet here for all of us to stand. But even with a cabinet, she may not be able to what? But I have satisfied the requirement of equality because we are all standing on the same pedestal. But have I satisfied equity? No. Equity requires that her own pedestal will be higher than mine so that she can achieve the objective of seeing across the window. Equity. And Ophonogu guided the societies. In fact, the, the moral code of our traditional societies was so strong in this concept of retributive justice that we had no word in Igbo for morality. It was a given. It was assumed. So as we seek for ways to redirect ourselves, we need to fish into these places and go back and take the moral codes, the value systems that we already had, and polish them and find ways to entrench them in our societies. And one of the politicians I admire so much, uh, my good friend Osita Chidoka, has even come up with the concept of Uchu, Uche, and Eguchuku. Uchu meaning enterprise. Every human being must be enterprising. Your life, your well-being is not dependent on any government. You are responsible for it. That life was given to you and not to the president. So you must be enterprising. You must get up every day to go do something. And if there's nothing to do, get out of the house. You will find something on the way. Enterprise. Uche, uche intelligence, and the good use of the intellect. And this is why we set up a lot of these literary societies, to see how to regenerate our societies from the ground up. And as young people get involved in reading, in writing, in drama, in poetry, in this, they become the, more, the thought leaders of the society. They begin to influence both the ethereal architecture of the society as well as its physical. And then Eguchuku, whatever you do, without a moral beacon is lost. Thank you.